Welcome to this video series. Here we'll be discussing the principles of general chemistry um, that are usually taught um, in introductory university courses. Um, and you'll see that much of this material is relevant to the MCAT exam, which is the medical college admitted admission test. Um, and a lot of this is also relevant to a lot of first year chemistry courses that people generally take. So without any further delay, let's get into the material. We'll start off with the very basic concepts of chemistry, um, and I think the most fundamental concept of chemistry is understanding what the atom is. So it turns out that there was this guy, Dalton, he was a British um, chemist, if I'm not mistaken, and he was the guy who came up with the atomic theory. So he thought of a fact. He said, well, if I could break down things, um, you know, more and more and more like this, um, you know, video is showing over here, if you could start breaking down things to the smallest level possible, you would reach a level um, where you wouldn't be able to break things down further. So this is what Mr. Dalton thought. He said that when you get to the level where you can't break things down anymore, he called that level the atomic level. The word atomic comes from the Greek word atmos, um, which means indestructible. So Mr. Dalton was right that, you know, if we broke down things, we would get to a level where we would see something called atoms. Um, but Mr. Dalton wasn't right in the sense that you can't break down atoms anymore. In fact, you can. You can break down atoms to get subatomic particles like electrons, protons, neutrons, quarks, and so forth. Um, so this guy really helped us set the foundation of modern chemistry by defining something called the atom. He wasn't entirely right by defining it, but he really got the research going on, okay? So the word atom came from Dalton's atomic theory, which, um, which means that Mr. Dalton said that at atom comes from the Greek word atmos, which means indestructible, but further theory said that that's not right. Um, you can break down the atom even more. So that's what we're interested in right now. So it turns out that the... Um, that the atom is primarily composed of two regions. So one is the central heavy part, and that central heavy part is called the nucleus or the center of the atom. Um, every particle that's inside of the nucleus, we call those collectively nucleons. So nucleons are just the residents, they're the citizens of the nucleus. Um, it turns out that there are two kinds of nucleons in the nucleus. So you have the neutrons, which are really heavy particles. Um, they're extremely heavy. And the other cool thing is they're, they're neutral. So they don't have any charge, okay? Now protons, on the other hand, are also really heavy but they also have a positive charge associated with them. So um, a charge is just some property of matter which decides if two things will be attracted or repelled. If two charges are the same, they'll repel each other. If two charges are opposite, like positive and a negative charge, they'll attract each other, okay? So the electrons revolve around the nucleus because of this electrostatic attraction between the nucleus and the electrons, okay? So there's this positive charge in the center, there's electrons revolving around it, and this connection between them helps the electrons stay in orbit. So it turns out that the mass of the atom, so most of its weight, so you can call it, it comes from the nucleus. Relatively speaking, um, at, um, electrons aren't really that heavy. They're extremely light. So uh, you'll see that soon enough we'll define their mass to be zero. It's not really zero, but we say that in, in relation to the nucleus, compared to the nucleus, their mass can be neglected, okay? So electrons are extremely, extremely light. One could even go on to say they're massless. Not technically, they do have a mass. It's a small mass. We can measure it. Um, but for our sake and purpose, we'll say that they're massless. And they carry a negative charge. So most of the 
you know, nuclear physics, nuclear chemistry, it, it, it happens because of the neutrons and protons, those few uh, fission reactions and fusion reactions that we are so used to seeing in, um, in pop culture, that's all happening due to the nucleus. But in real life chemistry, we don't really deal with that a lot. We actually are more concerned with electrons because electrons give way to chemical properties. So this dance of electrons moving from one atom to another. They exchange their atom atomic par um, partners. Because of this fancy dance that's going around, you see all the wonderful chemistry that's going on in this world. So we'll be more concerned with electrons than we will with nucle um, nucleus or nucleons, okay? So the composition of an atom is the central nucleus and electrons revolving around it. This picture helps you see that. So let's summarize things. So we have the neutrons and the protons in the nucleus. Um, to put it into perspective, the nucleus is extremely, extremely small and the electrons are extremely far away from it. So if you think about it, if the size, if you had a size of like a um, of a football stadium, one golf ball inside of that football stadium would represent the nucleus and you know the seats around the the stadium that's where your electrons would be moving around so um, the atom is really big and it has a lot of empty space in between it this is a pretty cool fact so neutrons have a mass that is about 1.675 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. Protons have a mass that's slightly less than that of a neutron. They're slightly less massive, um, but nonetheless, they're, they're comparable in their mass. Electrons, on the other hand, um, have a mass that's about 8, 9, 10, 11, about a thousand times less than a neutron and a proton, okay? So electrons have a really small mass. So we develop something called the relative mass or the atomic mass unit. AMU means atomic mass unit. So the, it's just that, okay, I'm going to, instead of writing down 1.675 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms every time, I'm going to develop a new unit. Um, and in this, I'm going to say that the mass of a neutron is 1. The mass of a proton is also 1 because they're approximately the same. And compared to those, the mass of an electron, I'm going to say, is 0. So I develop my scale in a way that I give the numbering 1 and 1 to neutrons and protons and 0 to an electron. The charge on a neutron is zero, the charge on a proton is plus one, and the charge on an electron is negative one. Moving on, um, there, there comes this question that how do we scientifically or objectively symbolize atoms or elements on the periodic table? Now I'm sure every one of you has seen a periodic table in your life. So how do we represent an atom or an element like sodium, hydrogen, beryllium, boron, and so forth on the periodic table? Well, this X is basically the atomic symbol. So we could have carbon instead of this X. We could have oxygen, nitrogen, fluorine, etc. Um, but I also represent a Z and an A with this X. The Z represents the atomic number. Essentially, the atomic number tells you the number of protons and electrons in the atom. Now, every atom that you see on the periodic table has a net charge of zero. They're not really charged on the periodic table. So since the net charge is zero, that means the total positive, when you add it up to the total negative charge, it has to equal to zero. So essentially, Z represents the number of protons, um, and it also represents the number of electrons. But we say that for every neutral atom, these two numbers are the same, okay? So the A represents the mass number, okay? Um, so if you recall, the mass comes from the nucleons. So A is just the total nucleons 
in the atom or in the nucleus. So remember, the nucleons is just the protons plus the neutrons, okay? So the um, mass number is just equal to the protons plus the neutrons. So now we have a question. Maybe this will help you see this better. Um, I have oxygen. Remember, this guy is the mass number, and this is the atomic number. Okay, so the question is asking how many electrons, protons, and neutrons are in this atom? Okay, well, I know that the number of electrons is equal to the number of protons if the atom is neutral. You can see that there's no charge on this oxygen. So since the electrons and protons are equal, well, that's just simply given by the atomic number, and that's 8, meaning there's 8 electrons and 8 protons in this atom. Now, the mass number, which I represent with the letter A, is equal to protons plus the neutrons. Remember, the mass number is just the total mass of the atom, and the mass comes from the protons and the neutrons. So now I know that the mass number is 16. From here, I know that the number of protons is 8. So therefore, if I simplify this equation, 16 minus 8 would give me the number of neutrons, um, which means that the number of neutrons is 8. OK? So here you have 8 neutrons, you have eight protons in the oxygen atom's nucleus, and then you have eight electrons revolving around. Um, so that's pretty cool. Now moving on, let's discuss something called isotopes. Um, this is really important as well, um, and it, it gives rise to something called radioactivity. Okay, so the word ISO means same, and this is how I remember it. Um, top in this isotopes, I, when I think of top, I think of this top number, okay? So basically, isotopes are same elements with this same top number, but the bottom number, meaning the mass number, is different. So essentially, they're just fatter elements. They're just elements that have, that ate too much, and now they have to lose some weight. Okay, so for example, the easiest isotopes that anyone can think of is the hydrogen 1, hydrogen 2, and hydrogen 3 isotopes, okay? Um, hydrogen 1 is simply hydrogen, hydrogen 2 is called deuterium, and hydrogen 3 is called tritium, 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 um, tritium. And the cool thing is H2 and H3 form something called heavy water. Because H2O is just regular water, um, D2O and T3O or T2O is something called heavy water, meaning it's just, it has more mass. Okay. Now, isotopes are essentially, like I said, they're, they're heavier elements, they're fatter elements that ate too much and now they've gained weight. But how does something, how does an element gain weight? Okay, remember, the weight is in the nucleus. Okay. So you have two participants that can increase weight. You can have the neutrons increasing weight or you can have the protons increasing weight. Um, so essentially, isotopes have the same number of electrons. So for these, the electrons are the same for all of them. So for all of them, it's going to be H1, H1, and H1. Um, you know, sometimes people can switch this order around. Um, they can put the mass number on top and atomic number on bottom as well. All you got to realize is that mass number is always bigger than the atomic number. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the atomic number on the bottom and the mass number on the top. So for H1, well, that's just that's just a simple hydrogen that we see on the periodic table. It has no neutrons and it has one proton and one electron. So that's H1. So now H2 and H3 
the question is do they have more protons being added or more neutrons being added so here the number of protons is 1 here the number of protons is also 1 and here the number of protons is also 1 it turns out that the neutrons are the ones that are being added um, and the reasoning for that is quite simple. If an element got heavier by adding protons, then what you would be doing is you would be adding more positive charges in an enclosed space. Now, I told you that like charges repel. They don't like each other. So if you added a lot of positive charges in one enclosed space, then that would make the atom extremely unstable. Therefore, you add more neutrons um, because they don't really have a charge so there's no greater electrostatic force so that's why isotopes have more neutrons the protons don't change the electrons don't change just the number of neutrons change in isotopes so isotopes are essentially elements with more neutrons now adding more neutrons is not favorable for the atom the atom doesn't like having more neutrons in its nucleus um, it doesn't like being heavier it wants to lose its weight so essentially what um, isotopes will do heavier isotopes will lose this weight from the nucleus by undergoing radioactive decay so they'll release radiation and they'll try to transition back into normal hydrogen from deuterium and tritium. So this is the case with all um, atoms. The heavier the atom gets by becoming a heavier isotope, it tends to go back um, to its lowest mass state. Um, and it does that by radiating or eliminating radiation from the nucleus. Um, and that process, we see that as radioactive decay. I want to leave things off by discussing cations and anions. So you can think of cations as cat ion. So you can think of a cat with a T representing that it's a positive ion, and anions, you can think of them like a negative ion. So cations essentially have lost electrons therefore their charge has become more positive right so think about it let's say our oxygen has okay oxygen had an atomic number of 8 and a mass number of 16 so if I were to have O2 minus that means whoopsies let's say I had O2 plus that means that I lost two electrons, okay? So that means the protons are still um, eight. And there, since I lost two electrons, instead of having eight, or instead of having eight electrons, now I only have six electrons. So the total charge is eight minus six, or plus two. Now on the other hand, let's say my oxygen gained two electrons. Well, originally this oxygen here had eight electrons. If I gain two more electrons, now I have 10 electrons or a negative 10 total charge. Well, the protons, I didn't do anything to them. It's actually really hard to add and take away protons from an atom. So essentially, the only two things that will be changing is neutrons, which give rise to isotopes, and electrons, which give rise to ions. Okay, anyways, so since the protons don't change, I still have eight protons. So the total charge for this is eight minus 10 or negative two. So that's how you get cations and anions. They're simply adding more electrons or taking away electrons. Isotopes are essentially adding more neutrons or taking away neutrons.